Praise the Lord, everyone. It's such a glorious day. I'm so happy to be here. It's been such a long while and a long good year. Let's just take a moment and, and uh, thank, thank God for his goodness. Father, we love you and we praise your name. We glorify you, God. You are the greatest love that we have ever encountered, God. We give you glory, Abba Father, for your, your goodness and your mercy that has followed us throughout the year. We thank you, God, for keeping us in your perfect peace. We thank you for your deep concern over us, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for your strong and, and mighty commitment over us, Jehovah. You truly are a loving God. And we bless your name, O oh God, because the love that you have shown to us, the love that you have first shown to us, God, it shines bright in our lives. And this morning, even as we partake of your word, as, as we get into your word this morning, my God, my prayer is that everyone encounters your love. I pray that, Father, your love will cause the truth to come forward and break every deception of the enemy, every lie, everything that is not of you, that it be shunned away and that your light shines bright in each and every person. I thank you for all the people that are watching via, via Facebook and other platforms, Lord. I also pray that they receive your word today and they receive that love, no matter where they are all around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Today I'm going to share with you, first of all, before I share, Pastor George, thank you. Thank you so much for trusting me with this opportunity to and privilege to preach to everyone who is watching and everyone who's seated in this room. Um, I'd also like to thank my fellow pastors, Pastor Joshua and Pastor Liz and the ministers of the house that we have serving in your different capacities. I value you, I love you, and I can't wait to see what God has in store for all of us. And all of you, I love you very much. <laughs> I love you, love you, love you. Now, what I was uh, going to share about is the excellent way, the most excellent way. That is the love of God. 2020, if there would be a proverb that I would give for it, I would say, out of the eater, something to eat, and out of the strong, something sweet. COVID was something that was looking to finish every single person. And then at the same time, it drew, it drew us closer to God. Out of the strong, something sweet. How many have felt the beauty of worship this year? How many have come closer to God and have, have fallen in love again? How many have felt the goodness of God? That he, you didn't have to have a million bucks or a million shillings for you to be like, God is good. You know deep in your heart, your spirit will testify that the Lord is good. Am I alone in this one? No. Out of the eater, something to eat, and out of the strong, something sweet. And a sweet worship has come out of us. We have good things that are now inside of us cultivated as we drew closer to God. Everything that we learn sums up to the perfect moment of testing. Everything that you learn, it sums up to the perfect moment of testing. I saw something that Pastor George had had spoken of on the 3rd of February this year, before the lockdown. And he said, seasons, they come and go, but purpose remains. He said, seasons come and go, but purpose remains. And he said, if you don't catch the purpose, then the season will come back again and you'll have to repeat the same season. I hope that even as we have been learning great things in this season, you have understood the purpose of the way things went and how things developed. That you did not let the purpose that God had in store in the midst of the strangeness just evade or, or just disappear like that, like osmosis or something, from a higher concentration to a lower one. I hope that you have been meditating on the teachings that we've had this year. Pastor George has been online with moving mountains with your mouth and we've also had a series on our identity and today we learn about the love of God 
It's so interesting. We've been given power, love, and a sound mind as our spirit. Moving mountains with your mouth is power. Knowing your identity is a sound mind. And knowing the love of God is the final and greatest of them all. I hope you're also making proclamations as much as you're learning things you're also making the proclamations over your life often we say I am the head and not the tail and people will think it's about being first in class or first in the line or first at the supermarket or first in something good but the truth is you're saying that your spirit man is the first and not the last that he is above and not beneath and as you speak that and your spirit man starts to gain and take that place that you have spoken that he should take the love of God is often expressed as um, John 3:16. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life children learn that verse and they meditate upon it actually they, as they are speaking as they're speaking it sometimes you might think it's just something that they've been given as homework but it truly is the truth about why we are here today the love of God it's the very reason for the season remember when you remember the purpose then you haven't missed out the season won't come back and repeat itself especially a season where you're supposed to learn something so let's see the purpose of the love of God in our lives the Lord came on earth the word says that we may have freedom he is the anointed one Jesus Christ that we may have freedom that the captives may be set free the brokenhearted may be bound together um, and and those that are sick may receive their healing basically to be removed from a place of bondage when we speak of the love of God often you would say if I was to ask you do you love God you say yes I love God but the truth is if God was to ask you what is my love how would you answer it's so easy to say you love someone based on how you see love but you've got to see love from their end to understand how to love them in premarital counseling they'll teach you love languages is affirmation gifts touch spending quality time and um, what's the fifth one I'm missing the spending sorry acts of service exactly it's the same thing with God those five actually apply from his end as well but now if we were to examine ourselves and ask ourselves do we love God based on those five what would you answer what would you say do you truly love the Lord especially in service and in the things that we do to relate with our neighbors Luke chapter 2 from 9 to 11 maybe we could look there it's about uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the angel said to the shepherd do not be afraid I bring you good news that will cause great joy to all people today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you this was the very entrance of the love of God manifest on earth already he loved us before Christ was born physically here he loved us already but this was that moment where the angels were like catch it great joy the Lord loves you so much that the Son is actually here and John 3 16 speaks of him being the only begotten son but guess what right now he's not the only begotten because of the sacrifice because of the love of God we are all accepted in the beloved we too are counted as the sons of God one time Jesus was asked what is the greatest commandment and he said love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind some versions will add with all your strength and the second one is like it love your neighbor as you love yourself what he was basically saying is love God with everything you've got everything that is a part of you that constitutes you love God with everything express back to him his kind of love his love is patient that means express patience his love is kind it means express the kindness have a good attitude in the time of waiting and being patient when God tells you to be patient he's basically saying 
If I say I'm patient, I'm saying, Lord, I trust in your word. And I trust that it will come to pass. I actually have peace and I will rest knowing that these things that you've spoken, they shall be. And I don't know about everyone else, but I had some desires. And I asked God, man, I know you said you love me. But how come some things look like they're delaying so much? You know what? I, I need them like tomorrow. I want to declare things and they happen. And the Holy Spirit tells me, trust in the word of the Lord. And as you trust in the word of the Lord, the peace sets in. You're no longer in a hurry. You're no longer in, a, in that spirit of trying to push things forward more than what they ought to be. Your attitude changes and it becomes that of gratitude and thanksgiving. And those are the things that open up great things for you. They're the things that bring forth the blessings. That, you know, as you're patient, as you're waiting, as you trust and as you believe. There's no one who's ever trusted in the Lord whom God has disappointed. There is none. It would be on record. We would have known by now. There is none. So just know that the things that you're hoping for, the Lord loves you. I'm driving at something here. The love of God over us. And I'm praying that you will get the words. Let, let them sink in deep so that you may be able to understand what is coming forth for you even in this moment. God affirms us. God gives us good gifts he calls us to spend quality time with him that's his love language and he speaks it and he calls you to the secret place and he says come come with me spend some time as we're thinking of fasting and praying that's the line we are at that's the atmosphere we're in an atmosphere where God is ready to just burst forth in his love for you so that you can carry it and it can be expressed through you to other people and that love, it sets many things free. Because of the love of God, we have salvation. We are here today. The love of God does great things. We can be and we are set free by the love of God. An example in service of the love of God is Mary and Martha. Let's turn over to Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Luke, Luke, Luke. The love of God. The Lord loves you so much. His love is so deep and so wide. Luke chapter 10. Sorry, guys, I'm getting to it. Are we all there? Say amen. Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. I'm there as well. Now while they were on their way, Jesus entered a village called Bethany. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who, was, who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teaching. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. And she approached him and said, Lord, is it of no concern to you? that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Tell her to help me and to do her part. But the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered anxious about so many things, but only one thing is necessary for Mary, has chosen the good part, that which is to her advantage, which will not be taken away from her. Amen. There's nothing wrong with Mary, with, with Martha. Many times people will look at Martha and say, she was so pushy and, you know, she wanted things done and she couldn't just spend time with Jesus alone. And some people will criticize Mary and say, instead of serving, someone is praying and we need to be working here. There's a secret there that was the problem. Service in love. There was no love where Martha was... was so quick to doing everything she needed to do with excellence but Mary found the good part that was to express the love of God back the account is of service with love and it concerns the selfish understanding of love when we think of love from our own perspective it's a selfish kind of love but when you think of the other person and the love that they have then you're able to understand the love should be a two-way thing 
as much as you're being called to God, he also expects that you draw near to him, he draws near to you. It's a nice dance. It's a beautiful thing that springs in your heart that makes great things available for all of us. Martha had diligence. Yes, she knew how to do the work that she did. She knew the acts of service. She knew how she was perfect at it. She knew the rules she knew you do this you do that make sure you fold this you fold that and most times as much as we have we are called to excellence we don't have to necessarily forget that the love of god should be expressed through the excellence that we release in every area of our lives even in our workplaces in your businesses as you serve in the church as you serve people out there as you are just being of service the love of god is key you can never do anything or rather it will never cause a change in people if you do not have love expressed in everything that you do. Do it with the love of God. Mary, in her act of service, she expressed the kind of love God needed at that time. Well, rather, the love of God, that a facet of the love of God that was expressed at that time. She gave the quality time. She yielded. And out of the worship, the anointing, the anointing came forward. I'd like to share with us today that even as we are sharing in different capacities, as we are serving in different capacities, the anointing of the Lord should break forth. She did something that was prophetic, but at the same time, that's what's expected in all of us. As you release the love of God, the kind of love that he expects from us, the kind of love that he expresses to us, the anointing breaks forth. As the anointing breaks forth, the lives of people change. Wouldn't you love to be a one who changes the life of someone? Not because you've been paid to do it or there's something that you're gaining from it, but just because you can. And being the Christmas season, people are giving to different organizations as they can and different NGOs going to orphanages and sharing with the orphans and with those ones who don't have even neighbors. But if it's not done in love, it doesn't testify of anything. It's in vain. It's empty. But you need to release things of substance, not just for the year, but it goes all through your life. Every single moment that you can express the love of God to someone, express it. But you can only give what you have. If you do not have the love of God, you, you can't fake it. It'll be picked. There's a distinct sound and rhythm to the love of God. It just speaks louder than anything else. You may not even have to say anything, but someone will feel ministered to. Someone will feel, my God, you have remembered me. Not because you have the power or you have all the money or you have the opportunity to be able to shine before men. But just because the love of God speaks louder and greater. Are you catching this thing? Is it infectious? I need for it to go forth in you and settle because of we're about to partake of the table. And there's great power that needs to be released. You can only understand if you have the love of God. And in, in, if you take in the, the, the love of God, there will be great power released today. You're always looking for moments where God will change your life. It's today. But take in the love of God. Understand it. Meditate as I speak. The greatest commandment of loving God. And the other, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. As you love God and express that love to Him, you will find that you're expressing it to people. And that means those people that you're expressing it to, those are your neighbors. So you can choose who your neighbor is to be. It's not necessarily the one that lives with you or the, love, the one that, that is, is, is in your vicinity where you live or at work. It's actually you can choose who your neighbor is. The person that you choose to express the love of God to. The patience, the being kind, having no envy, not boasting, you know, minding your neighbor, minding how someone is doing. Those things in turn just cause it, it goes back. As you love your neighbor, you love God. As you love God, you love your neighbor. Those two cannot be separated. They always are intertwined together. Everything stems from the love of God. Healing, provision, protection, promotion, gifts, salvation, Everything, every single thing stems from the love of God. Because of his love, we have all good things. He is the father of lights who gives good gifts to all his children. 
you are not forsaken and you are not you are not cast away from his presence the word of god says if i have the gift of prophecy in first corinthians 13 2 to 3 maybe you could turn there so we could look at it together first corinthians 13 from verse 2 to 3 hallelujah hallelujah glory 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 to our god hallelujah hallelujah first corinthians 13 2 to 3 i'm reading from the amplified and it says and if i have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from god to people and understand all mysteries and possesses all knowledge and if i have all sufficient faith so that i can remove mountains but do not have love reaching out to others i am nothing if i give all my possessions to feed the poor and if i surrender my body to be burned but do not have love it does me no good at all in everything that we do express the love of god the same chapter first corinthians 13 and 13 it says and now these three remain faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love out of everything that you do your giftings the power that you possess in different capacities whether it's in wealth or in connections whether it's an ability to be able to make it through different organizations to help people if you do not have the love of god you are nothing and at the same time if you give in those different capacities even if you gave the clothes on your back to someone if you do not have the love of god it gains you nothing how about we gain something in this season how about we become someone in this season and that is allow god to be expressed through you to the world that is the good news the lord jesus christ available to everyone in every capacity rejoice in the truth that is revealed persevere and have hope when we live in the way within which God expresses his love. And I urge you, read uh, 1 Corinthians 13 about the love of God and meditate on it. Don't be too quick to leave. Spend quality time with him. And you will begin to see what he wants to cultivate in you and the person that he's called you to be even deeper. Because in love is where we have our calling. It is out of the love of God that he has called us. So if you need to understand what your calling is or you're, you're wondering what should I do or who should I be or you have an idea, spend time in the love of God, meditate on it and you will see your calling will begin to spring forth and burst forth for you. Christ reveals his love and a part of love is forgiveness. There's understanding love as the love of God but there's also understanding that God loves you some people have condemned themselves because of things that have happened in the year or because of actions that they have committed and they've been unable to forgive themselves god has said in his word there is nothing that can separate us from the love of god the book of romans chapter 8 35 to 38 says so there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Not angels, not demons, not powers, rulers, or authorities of any form or kind. Not depths, not heights, not death, not life. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Understand that also accepting the love of God is a form of knowing the love of God. When you accept, then you understand and you come to see that God truly loves you you move in wondrous ways and your life is changed to multitudes and to and to uh, levels of great change to other people that will be around you you become a testimony of God's love some refuse to love because they want to remain having that feeling of they owe someone or someone owes them you refuse to accept to give forgiveness yet God has given you forgiveness because of love people at times will do things that hurt you people are people they will do things they will cross boundaries they will speak things and they will hurt you but it's not the end of the world the main idea is not to lodge in the pain 
not to lodge in the heart, not to lodge in what was said in previous times. Sometimes some people will carry grudges even over pastors because you are unable to reach them. Or maybe you were unable to reach us and you felt we were, we were not there for you in your time of need. Some people need to forgive parents. Some people need to forgive step-parents, ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends, ex-husbands, ex-wives. Some people need to forgive and just release the people that they've, they've, they've felt that they've, they've hurt them in one way or the other. Some people need to just let go of a particular thing that happened years ago. Let go of a particular incident. Let go of a, 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 a certain story that happened to you years ago. If you're remembering, may it be to the glory of God where you encourage someone that they could come out because of the love of God. The love of God is everything. Everything. It's the one thing that remains. There's faith, there's hope, and there's the love of God. While in those feelings God is asking you do you love me in the feelings of holding grudges in the feelings of someone has hurt you he asks you do you love me Peter was asked do you love me Peter Peter's like yeah of course you know I love you and then Jesus turns again he says do you love me Peter's like oh, come on this is becoming too much I love you but the truth is he was looking for his kind of love because he told him feed my sheep he said love my sheep that is the love of God. Understand his kind of love. If God was to ask you today, do you love me? He says, okay. My kind of love has forgiven you of your sins. So if you love me, are you expressing my kind of love to the other person? In forgiveness. Some people look for healing, but the healing can only come when you forgive. Release a person. Release the bitterness. Release that which is, is holding you back from love and freedom and being able to soar higher to greater heights than an occasion that happened some time back. And I'm not speaking as though I haven't experienced it myself. I have. And sometimes pastors go through it. They experience words from people. Sometimes rumors go around. Sometimes, you know, the, the things that are not even fair are being expressed to them and pastors will be humble and take in the heat. They will not say anything. They will not fight back. They will take it in and go pray. But what helps us and what keeps us is the love of God. Ability to know it, to release, and to surrender everything to God and to love again. Loving the same, same person. Loving the same people that may have caused hurt in years past. You become greater when you, when you rise above and you rise to the occasion. When you are called upon to rise on the occasion. If God was to use you to bless that particular person that hurt you, would you say, no, God, I can't? In essence, you'd be saying, Father, don't use me as a channel for this one. I, I just can't. But the truth is, you should be so open and so free and obedient, completely obedient to God, with love and feeling the love of God in truth, in the heart, and letting everything flow through. If we look at, this is... The second of my closing, finally, brethren, before we get into the table. Matthew chapter 18, 21 to 35. Matthew chapter 18, 21 to 35. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how many times will my brother sin against me and I forgive him and let it go? Up to seven times. Jesus answered him, I say to you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the accounting, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But because he could not repay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and everything that he possessed and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And his master's heart was moved with compassion. That is the love of God. And he, real, and he released him and forgave him, canceling the debt. But that same slave went out and found one 
of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began choking him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow slave fell on his knees and begged him earnestly, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he was unwilling, and he went and had him thrown into prison until he paid back the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved, and they went and reported to their master with clarity and in detail everything that had taken place. Then his master called him and said to him, You wicked and contemptible slave, I forgave all that great debt of yours because you begged me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave who owed you little by compassion, and I had mercy on you? And in the wrath of his, of his, mas and in wrath, his master turned him over to the torturers, the jailers, until he paid all that he owed. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you, every one of you, it says in Amplified, if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. I was so baffled when I saw this because it means the Lord can forgive you of what you may have done, but if you are incapable of forgiving another, it's recounted back. And you might live thinking you're forgiven, but because you're not expressing the kind of love the kind of mercy that God showed to you, to another person, it will be counted back. How serious is the love of God? Serious enough to have us move on and travel light. Keep no account of wrongdoings. That's a, a part of what God's love is. Don't keep any wrong accounts of a people. Let them go. Release them. Find healing. That's how it begins releasing and choosing to forget not keeping your mind on those things that were done that you cannot forgive let your heart re re receive the god kind of love and may you express it in everything that you do my final story is of a person who owed there's someone who purchased an item and then in purchasing the the item the, you know how someone comes and delivers it to you and you pay the delivery guy? And then the delivery guy gives you his number or her number and says, okay, this is my number, send it to this number, send the payment to this number. That person paid the amount so quick and they, they entered one digit and it was wrong and then it went to someone else. Now the person it went to, they had a Fuliza debt. So guess what? That money went. <laughs> And the person who delivered your, the items is actually standing waiting for their pay. Then they don't know that someone else has Fuliza. For them it's business and it's business. So the person found some way to just have that payment done and then deal with the person who had the Fuliza amount. Now, that person who had the Fuliza amount, obviously, when you call them, Mteja Patikani. Or... Uh, you will find they're not picking up the call or you know these things that get you so hot and fired up and you're like oh my god should I cast them should I start thinking yes you have my money you know you don't know who I am your identity now checks in not even as a spirit man but you know start standing and proclaiming the word of God and that person who owed that debt the reality is this for him to have a debt there was a problem so the person realized by the Spirit of God, this man, he's in debt. And the solution he was given by Safaricom was, oh, tell the guy to take another debt to pay your debt. Now you can imagine you're in a position where you're forcing someone to take another debt over the debt they have. Isn't that wicked? Over a very small amount of money. And the Holy Spirit quickens this person and tells the person, forgive his debt and speak that his debt is forgiven. And it's not just the, the debt or rather what that person owed. It means that which the full amount as a believer speak that it is forgiven, that they may be free. You can only do that if you have the love of God because God forgave our sins in that multitude completely. Not just what we owe, but what could have been even further. On forgiving that debt, the person realized that the word of God says this, Forgive others their debts as yours has been forgiven. Now, 
by, by that person forgiving that debt, that person who forgave the debt, their debts were forgiven. Although it was unknown to them, the debt that they had. Finding out later, in the wee hours of the night, that this person had a debt of over 100,000. I stopped seeing the person. It's me. <laughs> there, was, there was a debt of 100,000. And in that debt of 100,000, we were not sure how this thing was going to be met. And I just remembered saying, God, you said when we forgive others their debts, our debts are forgiven. We woke up in the morning and there was a call and the call was that the debt was forgiven. 100,000 just forgiven like that. Doesn't that remind you of the love of God? Yours forgiven, even though it may have been a small amount, greater is forgiven for you. The word of the Lord is true. And you cannot, you cannot dis dismiss the word of God. It's so true to the point where it affects your life to reality. The things that you speak of overnight can be changed. I don't know who may be sitting and listening and they're wondering, I also have a debt here and there. The year has demanded lots of things, maybe because of the pressures of life. You've had to take up debt. You've had to survive in one way or the other. And because of that, you, you've had to borrow here, you've had to borrow there, but maybe it's time that the anointing flows over and over and over as you begin to trust in God. It doesn't matter what debt you hold. The thing is, release, release people, forgive people, release any debt that anyone has. And even as you're releasing, it is by the revelation of the Spirit of God. He loves people and he forgives completely without thinking twice about what you've done and the depth of, oh, that one is such huge drama, I can't let go of it. He forgives completely. The word of God is true. And he will always step forth for you. I want us to just arise and take a moment with God. I want us to think deep in our hearts even as we're getting into communion. About forgiveness and about the love of God. What do we need to forgive? Have we loved God? Has God loved you more than you think? Or you know, do you think you don't deserve the love of God? Everyone deserves the love of God and that's why he gave us Christ who still lives till today a testimony that the love of God remains Forgive yourself For whatever thing that you think you may have done that God cannot forgive you for the Lord is always present to forgive ourselves to, for to forgive us. Sorry We are more than able to forgive because we have been forgiven I pray that even as you're meditating and as you are thinking of the love of God those who are in debt, be assured that as you release and as you forgive, your debt is also forgiven. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how much it costs. God is capable of moving the hearts of men. The ministering spirits will minister on your behalf because he knows my son, my daughter has a debt somewhere that needs to be released from them. Christ is anointed and he was anointed to set the captives free. The anointing was not taken from him. Till today as he is seated at the right hand of the father, he remains as the anointed one. The one who still sets captives free. The one who still binds the broken hearted. The one who still proclaims good news to the poor. That as you are, the anointing is present. That you need not fear to come before God because of your past. Because of the things that you have done before. Because you feel as though you have gotten yourself into such a huge mess that you cannot approach him. The, the throne of grace is open for you. The anointing is present. The anointing breaks the yokes. It's because of the love of God that the anointing flows deep and wide. Jesus would come over everything just to go for that one person who is in a deep dark place. Reach deeper and just release yourself to God and know that the love of God exists for this very purpose. That you'll be free and free indeed. That the truth will shine bright in your spirit. That you will understand and you will see these are the lies and they will be broken down by the word of God. Hallelujah. Take time and know that even as you are expressing the love of God back to him. This is the purpose for the season. 
that we are filled with the love of God. We have a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You know who you are. We've been taught the, the mysteries. We have understood. We have had the knowledge. The Lord is more than capable. Perhaps you're there and you're feeling like this disease I may have or this condition that I may have will not be sorted by God because I have done things in the past. It's not about what you've done or what your parents have done. It's not about the generational curses because Christ exists. The love of God shed abroad for all. The love of God speaks greater things on your behalf. The love of God is expressed in the table, in the blood of Christ, and in his body that was stricken for you. The Lord is good. The Lord is merciful. The Lord loves you beyond what you ever did. He's not a God who is just tweaked by circumstances. He's a God who loves you regardless. It doesn't matter. Regardless, he loves you. But search your heart. Find forgiveness. Forgive the parents. Forgive the grandparents. Forgive the caregivers. Forgive the ones, the guardians. Forgive the pastors who never did anything. Or rather, you felt they offended you in one way or the other. Forgive and let go. Forgive and release. Forgive and let go. Let go and let the love of God shine bright in you. Christ, the hope of glory lives inside of you. Let him express himself. May the love of God shine deeper. You've cried, yes. It still hurts you, yes. But forgive today. Forgive today. Forgive and let God have his way around you. Receive the peace of Christ today. Receive it even as I speak in the name of Jesus. Catch the words of God and let them settle in your heart and in your spirit. Forgive. Forgive spouses. Forgive. Things happen. Forgive, forgive and let go. Don't carry hurt anymore. Express the love of God back to Him. Express the love of God back to Him. The love that went so far for you. He gave His best. His very best. And He, he would give His best over and over and over. He would give His best to you. Father, we give you glory. Lord, we thank you for your word. And I pray that even as your word has found root in this people, O oh God, in all of us, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your love will shine bright in us from this day going on forward. I pray, Father, that we will serve in love, that we will love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But most of all, God, that we will love you the way you love us, that we will understand your love deeper. That we will understand your love that will drive the giftings, God. We'll understand your love that is for the generations waiting for us out there, God. We will, we will stand in your love in everything that we do. I pray, Lord, that even those who need the courage to go and ask for forgiveness from one person or the other, that they will find the courage to go forth and to ask for the forgiveness. I pray, Lord, that they in turn will find forgiveness. I pray, Father, that we will also be at a place, Jehovah, where we will receive of goodness from you. As we forgive, my God, we, we know that you are making great ways on our behalf. We know that there are surprises that are waiting for us. When you release, when you release, God releases over you. God will release over you. When you release, God will release over you. Let the good surprises come forth over people, God. Father, we love you. And we pray where there are any accusers, that my God, even as we are before you, may we find pardon before you, God. That even as you forgive us, may every debt, everything that anyone owes in this room, may they be set free from it this day and this hour. I pray, Lord, as people forgive, let the healing virtue of our Lord Jesus come upon them, O God. Cleanse them, Jesus. Change their lives. Healing of the mind, healing of the body healing of what wounded the soul i pray lord that everyone be filled with your joy for that is our strength even as the year has come to a close father we glorify you we worship you god and we love you we pray that the spirit of unity will begin to stand and to have round and strong root in us god bind us together by your love bind us together by your love may we express it 
in greater ways than we've ever seen or imagined. May the world know the love of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.